Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped. And welcome back to my handy long term of the Toyota RAV4 plug in hybrid. Now, I must admit, I am a bit of a fan of a plug in hybrid. It gives you that lovely balance between EV running on short trips and a petrol engine to back you up on a longer trip. But in my time while I've been doing Petroped, in fact, in my time while I've been driving, I've driven lots of different types of propulsion systems in cars. I've driven all the different variants of petrol engine, with the exception of a W16. I've driven normally aspirated diesel, turbo diesel. I've driven hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and a whole range of EVs. But every time I drive an EV, there is one type of car that people always bring up in the comments, and one type of car I have never driven before, or more specifically, one type of propulsion. So I am on my way to Toyota UK, to test drive a car with a propulsion system that I've never experienced before. I have a feeling today is gonna to be really interesting. So welcome to the secret bunker that houses the Toyota Heritage Collection. There is everything in here that you could imagine. There's a beautiful Mark 1 and Mark 2 MR2 over there. There's some really early Toyotas. But what am I going to be driving today? Well, sadly, it's not this stunning LFA with its screaming V10 engine. I have actually driven a V10 before. So um, in my intro, I did say today I was driving a powertrain that I've never driven before. Could it be a Formula One car? No, sadly not, although that would be very cool as well. No, today I'm going to be driving a car that Toyota are one of the few manufacturers to have a commercially available vehicle. Today is all about hydrogen, hydrogen fuel cells to be specific, and the car I'm going to be driving is parked outside. Let's go and take a look. So I've been driving my long-term RAV4 over there for a couple of months now. And I love the styling of that car. I love living with that car on a day-to-day -day basis. The plug-in hybrid drivetrain is just a really, really good fit for my lifestyle. Short runs, you're on EV. Long runs, you can rely on the hybrid. And for me, that is a really good example of Toyota at their best. However, what Toyota are also really good at is pushing the boundaries of technology. And this, I think this car demonstrates that better than anything else. This is the Toyota Mirai and it's powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. So over the past few years I've got to drive my fair share of hybrid and battery electric vehicles and some of them have impressed me a great deal. But the one thing in common whenever you do a review of especially full-blown electric cars somewhere in the comments someone is going to say Ah, but Ped, the solution to all of this kind of range anxiety and charge times and public charging infrastructure is hydrogen. Hydrogen's the future, hydrogen fuel cell cars. That's the way we should be going. Well, today I thought I would explore that a little bit more by driving my first fuel cell car, the Toyota Mirai. Now this is actually the second generation Mirai, a full fuel cell powered car. So the question is, what exactly is a hydrogen fuel cell? How do they work? How does the refueling thing work? There's an awful lot to unpack. So very shortly, I'm gonna be joined by someone from Toyota to help us deep dive into all of that. So in this video, I want to really get a better understanding of hydrogen and, and what part it could play in our future for automotive, especially here in the UK, when from 2030, new car sales can't be internal combustion engine cars we've kind of backed the whole battery electric vehicle thing here in the UK. And the question is, is that the right way to go? Is that the right decision? Was it made with all the facts or are there other ways forward? And I think it's a really interesting debate. But I also want to drive this car and review it as a car. How does it drive? What's it like? And I'm really excited to do that. So before we deep dive into all the technical stuff, let's just take a very quick look around the car because it's a handsome looking car and we'll start off at the back. So I guess the first thing to say about the Mirai is you probably don't see many of them around. This is the first one I've had a really good look at that hasn't been at something like Festival of Speed. Because if you don't live near a hydrogen fuel station, and we'll talk about how many of those there are in the UK and where they are, then 
really you wouldn't buy one of these. In fact, Toyota wouldn't sell you one because you wouldn't be able to live with it. So they are a rare car. I think it's a handsomely styled car. It's a kind of four door fast back style. The spec of the car is very similar to my RAV actually. This particular spec, white with uh, black roof, black privacy glass. It looks really, really smart. Now, we often talk about battery electric vehicles having, having zero emissions. Well, unfortunately, this car does have emissions, but don't worry because the way that the fuel cell works, we'll delve into in a bit more detail very shortly, but basically you take hydrogen and oxygen and combine the two together to help power the car along. But the byproduct of that comes out the exhaust pipe and it's water. <laughs> so this is an emission creating vehicle, but the emission is water. Now for me, this film is all about the technology that sits underneath this and I really want to deep dive into that. So the next thing we're going to do is get someone from Toyota to help us understand a bit more about how this car works and a bit more about the overriding strategy around hydrogen and where that sits in the, if you like, the technology mix of vehicles going forward. But from an aesthetics point of view, I really like this. Now then guys, welcome to the channel, David from Toyota. Now you're gonna tell us everything we need to know about hydrogen, right? Yeah, morning, Ped. Uh, let's start at the beginning. What you're gonna to drive today is an electric car, uh, okay. but not in the traditional sense of the word in the way that we've grown to understand it. You don't plug the Mirai in to charge its battery. Uh, it's fueled by hydrogen. Um, and if we look under the bonnet, what we see here is the fuel cell stack yeah. and the converter. Yeah. So the hydrogen combined in there where there's 330 fuel cells uh, with oxygen, then creates the electricity that powers the car. So is there, is there a battery yes. bank like you would have in a, in a traditional BEV? Yes, there's a battery, yeah. uh, but it's far, far smaller yeah. than the battery you'd need to deliver the 400 mile range that the Mirai can drive. Okay, so let's take a step back. For, so those guys who've not got any idea, if we go, start off with the hydrogen side of things, so hydrogen gets put into this vehicle yep. as a liquid. Correct. Under pressure. Correct, 700 the bit, bar. The bit that you said to me, 700 bar, yeah. that is immense. Yeah, uh, and then if you looked at the technology that creates those fuel tanks, the carbon fiber, fiber weave, it's really interesting. And there's all sorts of videos online. Of yeah. The R&D behind those tanks, bullets being fired into them to prove the safety of hydrogen and so on and so forth. Yeah. But, but, the, I guess a normal petrol car has a petrol tank full of a highly combustible exactly. fluid in it, right? So this is, so the, the, the fuel tank that holds the hydrogen, how much hydrogen would be on, on board? Uh, there's about six kilos. Six kilos yeah. of hydrogen under pressure at, yeah. at 700 bar yeah. in a carbon fiber fuel tank. Correct. See, that's cool. You've got carbon fiber already <laughs> in the fuel tank. <laughs> And then it gets fed in. So where does the, the oxygen and hydrogen mix get yes. done there? So, where so there are the... fuel cells and gas channels in this stack. Yeah. Uh, the chemical reaction occurs in that stack. And then through the converter, we create the electricity that powers the car. Wow, okay. And the oxygen, does it just get from the atmosphere? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that leads us on to another interesting quirk of the Mirai. Yeah. So to some extent, the Mirai will clean the air as it drives. Okay. So, so there is, there is a, uh, a filter uh, that has an electric charge applied to it. Um, and while the car is driving, the air that hits that charge uh, is then effectively cleaned. So um, almost 100% of uh, pollutants up to 2.5 in diameter will be removed as the Mirai drives. Wow, so this is actually kind of solving global warming by cleaning the atmosphere. Let, let, let's not get carried <laughs> away. <laughs> so, okay, so in terms of the, so let's talk electric numbers and relate them to a normal yeah. electric vehicle. What kind of uh, power and, and so on have we got? So in terms of power, as we'd understand it, when we traditionally talk about cars, uh, the Mirai has about 170 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, now, if we go back in terms of the progress of Toyota fuel cells and the Mirai, this is the second generation Mirai, the old car uh, had about 150 horsepower, but the advance in technology uh, means that we have a fuel cell powertrain that is 50% lighter than that old system, wow. but still manages to produce about 12, 13% more power. Right, okay. Okay, so, so okay, can we talk hydrogen in the, if you like, the ecosystem of cars and the future and 
fueling. So you yeah. need hydrogen for one of these. Yeah. You can't get that from a normal fuel station. And unlike an electric car, you can't have it at home. How many stations are there in the UK? Whereabouts are they? What, what's the sort of the, the situation there? Uh, there's 11 or 12, and I say 11 or 12 because um, one or two are just in the process of opening. So mm -hmm. there's a new station that's opened up in Teesside. Uh, there's soon to be one in Derby. Uh, last year, there was one that opened in Birmingham. Uh, so things are growing in terms of infrastructure, yeah. but we're nowhere near the stage where we can consider hydrogen fuel cell vehicles mainstream in the UK yet. Yeah. Um, and I say in the UK because it's interesting looking across the rest of the world. Uh, if, if you look at Germany, for example, uh, in Europe, uh, they have 90 refueling stations to our 10 or 11. What? Why does that surprise me? <laughs> you know? Okay, so uh, the other thing, talking off camera, we talk, so a lot of people say, okay, how do you distribute the hydrogen to these stations? But you say some of them, they effectively create the hydrogen yeah, at the so station rather than having it tankered around in big Hydrogen's Arctic. the most abundant element in the universe. You can create hydrogen on site at a fuel pump. Uh, you electrolyze uh, using uh, hopefully green energy um, you, you can electrolyze using excess energy from the grid. So energy that is otherwise wasted uh, can be used to create your hydrogen. So um, if the investment in the infrastructure is there to deliver these green electrolyzing fuel stations, I think that's a really uh, strong way forward. Yeah. So obviously this is a kind of consumer passenger vehicle. And in order to live with one of these, under most people's journey profile, unless it was just local trips and you live near a hydrogen station, that's probably not a great thing. But where does this hydrogen sit within things like commercial vehicles? Because mm. it, it seems to me things like buses, lorries, tractors, hydrogen sounds perfect for those because battery electric vehicle buses and stuff have real challenges in terms of range and yeah. charge times. And if you live somewhere that's hilly yeah. or if you're running a bus in the cold for eight hours a day, yeah, it might not stack up. Uh, but you're right to talk about those other sectors and for Toyota, uh, passenger cars is the tip of the iceberg. Toyota has been looking at fuel cell technology since the early 90s in terms of, as a fuel, what it can deliver in terms of reducing emissions, not just in personal mobility, but as you say, heavy haulage, uh, trucks, buses, trains, planes. Uh, but increasingly, we'll also see hydrogen being used to power homes, to power industry, heating, lighting. Mm. Uh, delivering energy uh, for a cleaner world. Uh, in fact, Toyota is building a city, woven city in Japan at the base of Mount Fuji, uh, which will combine all of those elements of a hydrogen society to demonstrate how you can use this fuel source to decarbonize. Yeah. So I get, because people kind of need to see this almost as a technology test bed, as uh, pushing the boundaries, disruptive technology. Yeah. Because some people might look at it and go, what's the point of a fuel cell car? You can't fill it up, you can't use it. But that's not the point. No, uh, it's, it's and, and uh, it is a test bed for Toyota, even though this is the second generation Mirai. And where does this sit in your, your kind of hybrid? Because obviously I've, I've turned up today in a plug-in hybrid well Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I thought you'd be pleased with that one. Um, and I love it to bits. And, and you've clearly, you're known for the Prius and, yeah. and almost the, the hybrid revolution you could pretty much put that at Toyota's yeah. doorstep, right? It, it's, you were responsible for a lot of that. And the, the Where does this sit with that whole mix for you? Yeah, the, it, it completes the picture for Toyota. So uh, the arrival of battery electric vehicles for Lexus and soon Toyota, uh, combined with our fuel cell technology means that we can offer the whole package for consumers who want to drive vehicles with fewer emissions. Yeah. So we have our traditional hybrid electric vehicles. You mentioned the Prius as the start of that powertrain. Uh, we have plug-ins, we have fuel cell, and we have battery electric. There's not many manufacturers can say that, are there? I don't think there are any. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that amazes me that, that, that everyone talks about fuel cell, oh, hybrid, hydrogen is the future, but very few manufacturers are actually doing it, playing mm. with it, commercially having it available. And I think that comes back to Toyota's worldview of uh, the, the benefits of hydrogen as a fuel uh, that stretch far beyond personal transport. So we see this as uh, very much a, a small piece of the hydrogen society generally. Cool. So the next thing I've got to do is take it for a drive.
go for a spin. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Thank you so much for, for giving us an insight into the, the sort of Toyota vision for fuel cell and helping us understand this a little bit more. No trouble. It does look really cool though. You should have... Okay, are we ready to drive our first hydrogen fuel cell vehicle? I'm so excited about this. Uh, so first off, just approach this car like driving an EV by all accounts. Um, we talked about the fuel cell under the bonnet, so that's where the magic happens, where the hydrogen is combined with the oxygen to create the electricity to then drive the motor. The motor is on the rear axle, so it's a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Hydrogen um, storage is there's three pressurized hydrogen tanks on the car. One runs effectively under here where the transmission tunnel is. There's one under the rear seat and one under the boot. Um, there's a smaller capacity battery as well, um, but let's start the car coming to life. There you go, some nice funky graphics. I love the interior. It's got a really nice uh, nice display, very modern feel, kind of very Prius-like gear changer. Um, I reckon we just get going, so I'll just push that and then down to put it into drive, and then off we go. So, well, that just feels like a normal electric car and I guess that's that's the thing with this right you just it just drives like a normal electric car but the energy that the electric motor is using is coming from a chemical reaction so I find it incredible that within the UK we've got this fascination with battery electric vehicles and everybody's being forced to go that way and, and I'm not going to sit here and say that's right or wrong but I just think it's, in my view, a little bit too blinkered because there are other options. So yes, um, BEV technology is better. Battery efficiencies uh, are better than they've ever been. I'm gonna go up here, I think. I don't actually know where I am. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna get lost in a big way. Um, but yeah, so we've got better battery technology, better motor technology. And I guess it's an easier fix or a quick fix because, you know, we've already got a wide range of battery vehicles out there and all manufacturers have now battery vehicle or you know, battery electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles on their fleet. But the challenges with a battery uh, electric vehicle, as I've documented in many of my videos, uh, is weight of the vehicle, range of the vehicle and then charging. Now, if you are doing local trips and you've got the ability to charge at home, and one of the other things I get always thrown at me whenever I'm doing an electric car review is it's fine if you've got somewhere at home, but if you are living in a flat or you don't have off-street parking, then charging your own car at home is, is a real problem. Um, and therefore you're then having to use public infrastructure and there's the cost associated with using that public infrastructure uh, and the time and the pain and the hassle. Um, my other issue with uh, just going down the whole battery route is the UK government have just reduced VAT on public electric charging because it was different to domestic VAT but you know the elephant in the room is how much money does the UK government currently make from uh, duty on fuel? Um, I don't know what the exact number is but it's it's in excess of 80 pence in the pound is, is tax right so what happens when we all start using electric vehicles and not, not using petrol and diesel? Where's that tax going to come from? Well, it's going to come from electric, right? They're going to have to increase taxes on electric. That will make electric vehicles even more expensive to use and operate. So for me, hydrogen is, is an interesting part of the mix. Yes, there are some significant hurdles to overcome. Um, and the biggest one at the moment um, is the accessibility of hydrogen as a fuel source. So. You know, for me, I can rock up to a, if, if the, I went to a hydrogen station, which I won't do today as it happens because the car's full, but I could go to a hydrogen station, I can connect the nozzle to the back of this car and I can get a full tank of hydrogen in three minutes. And that will give me about 400 miles of range. This car will do around about 400 miles. It depends obviously on how you drive. Interestingly, it also depends on how much um, or how efficiently the hydrogen um, delivery system is working. So that very high pressure delivery system, um, it might not always be the case that it can get the full pressure into the tank 
So you might you know, be 20 or 30 miles off the theoretical maximum. So I think for one of these, sort of 300, 350 miles is a realistic range on a full tank of hydrogen. But you can get that in three minutes. So although driving one of these cars is just like driving an EV, there's also loads more stuff going on here that's all very new. So the interesting thing is, um, if you think about a petrol car, you'd be talking about miles per gallon. If you're thinking about um, uh, an, uh, an electric car, it would be miles per kilowatt hour. In this car, you're talking kilograms per hundred kilometers. So they kind of think about the hydrogen in terms of its weight rather than its volume, which I think is really interesting. And I have, a, at the moment we're doing uh, 1.23 kilograms per hundred kilometers now I'm not entirely sure whether that's good or bad um, just like an EV this car is so quiet but it's also so smooth the ride quality is excellent and I think that's you know you might think of this car and think oh, maybe it's a test but maybe it's not a great car but if you even just take the fact that it's a fuel cell car out of the equation and just just take this car on its own merits as a car and it's a really good car I like it a lot and I've only been in it an hour but if you then add to the fact that it's it's a fuel cell car and it's got so much technology in it it's truly truly impressive and you know if this if this is what we could have if this is the future that we could have in terms of the car let's kind of deal with the whole hydrogen infrastructure problem but in terms of the actual car and you translate this technology into a passenger car into um, goods vehicles and you know uh, vans and buses passenger service vehicles tractors um, earth moving equipment for me actually as we said earlier on those are the types of vehicles that are crying out for hydrogen because BEVs just simply don't work for them it's all very well and good Elon Musk talking about his Tesla truck, but really, really in the big scheme of things, I just don't see that working. I, I really don't see, there's a truck coming the other way. I don't see electric trucks working in, in scale. And I think hydrogen is the perfect solution for that. This is more like it, out of the built up area onto a nice bit of road. So let's now praise the car as a car. It's a really comfy place to sit. It does feel like quite a heavy car. It's quite softly sprung. It's by no means set up as a sports car. The turn of pace in sport mode is, is ample. It certainly gives a kind of punchiness to the drive. As I've mentioned, it's by no means gonna set the world on fire. But actually, when you start getting a nice sort of set of flowing bends, it's an enjoyable place to sit. It's so quiet, this car, and it's so smooth. It's got regenerative braking and the brake pedal feel is nice, but it's not as aggressive as the sort of one pedal driving modes you might get in some EVs. And honestly, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, if you didn't tell me this was a hydrogen powered car, I wouldn't really know, to be honest. It just has the characteristics of, of a BEV. It's got that instant torque. It's an electric car. The only difference is how the electricity is generated. Rather than it's generated from an external source like, I don't know, a wind farm or a nuclear power station or a coal-fired power station, and then stored in a battery and then delivered to the motor, the difference is this thing generates the electricity on the fly by a chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. And I think that's really, really cool. This car makes so many cool noises when you turn it off. So what are my final impressions of the Toyota Mirai as it purges itself after our drive? I have found today fascinating on so many levels. I've wanted to drive a hydrogen fuel cell car for some time. You might be able to see the, the vapor coming out the back of the car, and that's really cool. 
But yeah, I wanted to drive a fuel cell car for quite some time. And, and to be honest, I didn't really know what to expect. Although I kind of thought it would just be like driving an EV and it is. So if you've never driven a fuel cell car, it's just like driving a normal electric car. The only difference is that car generates its electricity on board using a fuel cell rather than storing the electricity in a battery. As a car, very impressive. It's beautifully put together. It's got so much kind of familiarity to me as having driven the, the RAV4 for the last couple of months. It's a beautiful interior. I think the styling's great. I quite like the fact that it's a sort of fastback four-door saloon and not an SUV. I think it would look amazing as a shooting brake estate car though. But for me, this video is actually more about the fuel source rather than the car. Is hydrogen a viable thing for our motoring future? You know, is it something that we should be investing more money in? Should it be higher up the agenda? And from what I've learned today, I think the simple answer to that question is yes. And I would love to know what you think. Please join the debate in the comments below. At the moment, the infrastructure in the UK anyway is at its infancy, 10 stations. Although the advantage of that is you can turn up to a hydrogen station. Within three minutes, you get 400 miles of range on your car. It's done, sorted. You don't have to think about transporting large, big tankers full of hydrogen because the fuel station can generate that hydrogen at source. So it's an investment thing, right? It's a, it's a will. If the government said, right, actually part of the energy mix is going to be hydrogen and we're going to invest in it, then I think things would be very, very different. Hats off to Toyota for, for having what is effectively a showcase of technology, but for pushing the agenda. I think for, um, for, for uh, goods vehicles, for buses and trucks and plant equipment and tractors, hydrogen has to be part of the mix because just full-blown electric doesn't work for them. And I think if we think about what's going to happen in not just post 2030, but what's the world going to look like in 10, 20, 30, 40 years time, hydrogen has to be part of that for me. And today I've kind of really opened up, uh, I feel like a bit of a Pandora's box. I want to learn more. I want to explore this further, but I would love to know what you think. I have to say a massive thank you to Toyota UK for inviting me up today to, to experience the Mirai. As I said, it's been something I've wanted to do for quite some time. So to finally get to do it, it's been fantastic. I love to know what you think, but I hope you've enjoyed that one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. But for now, I've got the car for another couple of hours. I'm going for a drive. I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.